I'm in a commercial kitchen here, um, just about doing an inspection. Um, we spoke to the, the owner of the premises, um, and we've, we've got an understanding of what the problem is. Um, what's the process? What are we going to do here? How are we going to approach the, uh, the inspection? My approach uh, to this the job, as with any job with uh, you know, pet, pest control, is to try and find uh, where the pest is harboured. So you need a, to apply a methodical approach to try and find where the, the cockroaches are in the situation. Yeah. Here, I would certainly break the kitchen up. You know, you've got sort of ground level areas. You now, if they're on wheels or casters, you know, cockroaches will certainly get in and breed in those those sorts of areas. There, um, for me, I think you know, German cockroach control often in the commercial kitchen, you'll often need to put your overalls on to get down and lie on the ground to be able to check and search in under those, those sort of bench areas or uh, equipment areas to find an infestation there. Looking around the, the rest of the kitchen area here, you've, you've got similar type areas, under bench areas uh, over here, you know, above this bin. Um, we look over to the dishwasher, you know, the, the, you know, the motor area that, of that area may well conceal cockroaches as well, the shelving area there. Um, you know, over time, you know, German roaches will conceal themselves or harbour themselves behind the soap dispenser behind the you know, hand, hand washing uh, uh, basin sign, you know, uh, behind the clock area. Potentially any area, uh, any fixture or fitting, they may be harboured around. So they're all important areas to get in and check and inspect to see if, if there is any uh, problems in those areas. There. These areas uh, behind these stainless steel covers uh, are often an area where cockroaches will get in, German roaches will conceal themselves. You know, this, this cover is fairly well sealed and that prevents them uh, being able to access that area there. And when we move down, down to this area here, same sort of a principle, a, a cover, stainless steel cover, but at the bottom it's not sealed uh, and certainly German roaches would be able to get up and into this area here. Uh, quite a simple fix, just to run a, you know, run a silicon bead around the bottom of that area there. That's going to prevent them being able to get, get into that area there. An ideal area again for German roaches to conceal themselves up in this area. Um, we've got this shelf support, this stainless steel shelf support, which doesn't seal too well and there's a gap sitting between the shelf and the actual plate which supports the shelf and again uh, German roaches could hide and conceal themselves in that area there. You know, from an application point of view or choice of formulation, you could use either a dust or a gel application in this sort of situation. Okay, just to sum up, uh, trying to treat a kitchen you know, of similar sort of size and, and uh, nature in relation to German cockroaches, you'd, you'd be wanting at least 30 minutes or more uh, to get in and, and, and treat this sort of situation. You could be looking at an hour if there was a you know, heavy infestation um, in this place. You know, the approach needs to be methodical. Get in and try and find all the potential areas you know, where, the, where the cockroaches might, might be found. From a choice of formulation point of view, um, you know, I would look to use uh, you know, Max Force, any, any of our Max Force gels uh, to control your German cockroach problem. You know, your Coupex dust applied in the cracks and crevices and tempered uh, could be applied as an, an edge, edge spray to try and combat uh, your, your German roach problem as well in that area. Okay, Brett, we're um, on an external um, dining area here. People come out with their food and drinks. Um, what are we going to be dealing with here? What are the pests we're likely to find? Um, and what's the, uh, the approach we're going to take with that? Okay, Jeff, um, I think our focus is going to shift you know, from the internal problems we countered with German cockroaches to larger species of cockroaches being in an external uh, area outside here. You know, we may, may encounter American, Australian, smoky brown cockroaches in this, this situation. Not ruling out German roaches, but the outside environment's uh, less likely to be an issue with those guys. Well, the first thing is uh, always look up. And uh, if I look up, I see a uh, sheeted uh, roof area. Clearly there's a void up there. Um, and if we've got a large problem of uh, roaches, that's probably the first place I'd go because during the day, um, we're probably not going to see too many roaches and uh, if they're around they're probably going to be hiding up in there at the moment. Obviously to do that we'd need to get a, a ladder to access the, the ceiling void. You know, we've got a couple of different areas, one over here and one behind, uh, you know, behind this area over here. Um, you know, we'd get up and check and inspect to see if we, we're dealing with there's any uh, you know, cockroach activity up in that area there. You know, if, if we found cockroach activity there, what, what type of application would be used, Jeff, in this situation? Uh, definitely a dust. Definitely dust, uh, Coupex dust, 
Um, mindful of, of course, when we put um, dust into a void, where is it going to go? Um, we've got quite a number of um, light fixtures and, and vents in this um, in this roof space here, and uh, we put dust in at one point. Where is it going to end up? Um, we want to make sure that we're not pump, you know, pumping out heaps of dust down the other end, um, out onto tables, etc. And uh, uh, but certainly, I'd be looking at um, yeah, high volume dust application. Um, to this void and um, I think you get a very effective treatment. Now, in addition to what uh, you had recommended in the, the ceiling void area, mm. I would look to you know, apply a, an edge or perimeter treatment you know, around this, this floor area here um, to offer you quite a first line of defence in relation to preventing big cockroaches you know, into, the, into the internal areas of, of the hotel. Um, now, in, in addition to that, uh, you know, when we when we look at the the structure of the place here, we, we've got um, this, the border is or the boundary is shared with the, the property next door. So gaining access into this area to try and offer your treatment uh, down at that level becomes difficult. Um, we look at the you know the structure of this this railing area here, and we can see or feel that there is a, a, a crack or a crevice, you know, in this area here, which is a great great harbourage for for big roaches to conceal themselves in that area there. You now the ideal product I think in this situation would, would be to apply Sizzlin Ultra or Sizzlin Aerosol in this area here. I mean I'm suggesting that product because it's it's going to limit your fallout you know of, of treatment into the open area here. You know a liquid, li liquid application say with tempered would be suitable too but you you may have a concern with it you know falling out into areas and you know, getting getting into areas which you don't want to be where people are going to come in contact with. Putting in the context of perimeter pest control, what we're trying to achieve here is um, um, effectively intercepting any pests uh, at this location entering the rest of the building, um, as well as providing a, a suitable environment for people to, to dine and, and, and drink out here. Um, as you've said, you, you put a treatment around the perimeter of this balcony, uh, which is a great idea, and you've identified further out from that a, um, a crack that is potentially a, a major harbourage. In an ideal world, we would have liked to have treated that um, outside wall, but our jurisdiction really finishes at this at this point um, and this height, and it's very difficult for us to achieve, you know, the ideal application. So, not always can we get, you know, a perfect application on the site because we're not allowed, or we don't have the jurisdiction to get out to those areas um, to put our treatment. Okay Brett, um, we're in the uh, general use storage area. Um, you can see there's quite a different range of things that the, you know, the owners and the, uh, the workers uh, put in this room. Um, one of the challenges I can see is that we've got an open roof void. Very difficult to try and work out what we're going to do here. What are the challenges here um, with regard to a treatment? And what are the pests um, other than German roaches we might come across? I agree Jeff. a difficult situation to, to try and uh, you know, control pests in, within this environment here. You know, as you can see, it's an open, you know, open void or open roof, roof arrangement or ceiling arrangement. You know, we're looking up, you know, against the the brickwork here. We can see uh, entry points certainly for rodents to to come in and access the the building in this area. Certainly bigger roaches as well. We look on that wall area there, and it appears as though there's some sort of smear or rub marks, perhaps from from rodents, where they've tried to access this this area in this room. Um, we look up that wall further up higher again and again it's the brickwork's been knocked out as well and there's a potential entry there for you know for rodents and, and bigger bigger roaches and other pests to access this this room i think jeff what we need to do here due to the nature of the environment being in such an open arrangement uh, perhaps express those thoughts to to the manager that there is difficulty in trying to control you know pest problems in this this area or this environment you know yeah, my thoughts obviously is to try and prevent entry or pests getting into this, this area. The best way to achieve that would be to, to put a ceiling back in place in this environment. I appreciate there's a cost involved in that, but I think long term that would be your best approach to try and prevent pest entry into this area. You know, in conjunction with you know, sealing up these major sort of you know, uh, openings in the brickwork uh, here. Um, you know, and in doing that, you're gonna uh, reduce problems getting getting into this this room area. Talk to management, understand what this area is used for, what are the items that stay here permanently and what are the ones that come and go and that might help a little bit in terms of where we might direct some of our treatment as well. 
It's like a bit of a storage for a uh, for dry goods. Dry goods, yeah. Look at another uh, potential area or areas I see within this room where German cockroaches may may harbour themselves. You know, the, again, the shelving uh, framework, with the hollow tubing uh, up against the, the wall area over here, I can see looks like a freezer, another potential area where there's some heat uh, being produced where German roaches maybe may favour those conditions. Um, again, ideal area for rodents too to you know, potentially seek a food source in this area. I'd probably put maybe a yeah, rodent station in there um, and, and probably some um, sticky traps in here just to understand the, the changes in pest. Um, population in this room over time. Mm -hmm. I just noticed up in there the, um, there's a, a real break in the back corner of this uh, false ceiling and uh, makes a really good entry point for, uh, for particularly rodents and potentially some roaches as well. It's something that I'd certainly try and um, address as part of my uh, proofing measures. What I see with, with the challenge of some of these commercial properties is that um, there, there's a real balancing act between um, dealing with you know, uh, the pest problem in, in, in a proofing sense or an IPM sense and, and just doing a direct treatment. It's obviously a lot quicker to, to zip in, do a treatment up front um, than it is to go and spend the time to properly proof areas that you identify um, as potential harbourages. And um, you know, obviously that's, that's something that's challenging for pest control companies to grasp, you know, which way do we go? Do we, do we put a, um, our proofing cap on and, and try and prevent as many pest problems as we can in the front end of a uh, commercial account, getting the benefit longer term, or do we just go in and do our treatment as quick as we can and regularly do that on, on uh, you know, a monthly basis? Well, I think it's important perhaps to give the, the client some options. We give options for you know, treating other, other pests in other situations, but give them options about you know, uh, you know, use IPM as a means of trying to prevent the problem, as in replacing the tiles or, or sealing the gaps and cracks and crevices. Um, will will help prevent problems, you know, in, in the future. There, but, uh, it's all about communication, let, letting your customer know what what, what can be achieved, uh, you know, to get the best result long term. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Brett. One thing I notice is the environment. What are you noticing? Yeah, it's certainly when you walk in from the corridor into, into the, uh, you know, the the cellar room, storage room area here. It's a lot warmer in this in this area here. Obviously, the machinery is producing some heat. Um, and then I think about, I look at all the boxes stored up on the shelf up there, yeah. and I put sort of uh, heat and boxes together. It makes me think well, it's a potential area where German cockroaches could breed up. All right, thinking about this area um, and how we treat it, what, what are we going to do? Look, when, when I look around this room, I see a number of potential you know, areas where you know, German roaches may, may harbour themselves. You know, we, we see the boxes there, as we, we spoke about a bit earlier on. Um, you've got some freezers or a, you know, an ice machine uh, in this area, or, and vice versa, same sort of thing, arrangement here. You've got your, you know, your equipment machinery running over there. Um, I look over on this wall here, I can see you know, your post-mix cartons and your cylinders. You know, you've got you know, fixings or gauges on the wall you know, fixed to plating, which obviously has gaps and crevices behind it. You know, other potential areas where they may well be. You know, same with the units, we move around the wall area, I can see the same sort of thing you know, on the back wall. Um, what, what type you know, formulations would you use in this situation, Jeff? Well, it's a big three, really, isn't it? You, it's gel um, uh, for discrete application. It's um, hand-applied dust um, for all these uh, wall fixed plates um, out in beyond the power points. Um, and then I, I personally use a spray application down low to get control of this uh, concreted area. You've told us what you're going to do, what you're going to use, but the one problem I can see here is a lot of clutter. Um, how are you going to get the product to where you want to place it? Yeah, I agree, Jeff. Yeah, there is a lot of stored items uh, in the way here. You know, ideally, we need to shift those things to be, enable us to get into those areas so we can carry out our treatment. Now, if you can achieve that successfully by yourself or shifting those areas, if there's not too much uh, effort or work involved in doing that, by all means. But at times, I would probably involve management here in this situation, you know, get them to come in, point the problems out where you found them and ask for their assistance to try and uh, you know, shift some of these goods to enable you to get into those areas. 
because at the end of the day, you know, it's going to wind up you know, you know, giving a, you know, a better treatment if we can get access into those areas. Okay, Jeff, well, we're running the, um, the externals of the outside of the hotel here. And what we're going to do now is to try and uh, look to see if we can prevent or help control you know, large cockroaches you know, getting, getting into, the, into the building. Um, what I like to do in this situation is apply a, an external perimeter treatment around the outside of the building to act as a first line of defence to, to prevent you know, pests being able to access the internals of the building. Um, you know, some of the difficulties I, I can see with this situation here at the moment is we've got all this rubbish, you know, stored up against, against the building here, which restricts you, you being able to access that wall area to, to get your treatment in place. Um, could, could you suggest or think of, you know, other areas you may look to target? Definitely, Brett, all the entrance ways, um, all these roller doors where we're, we've got goods coming in and out um, into the storage areas are, are key places. I can see, um, you know, particularly this fluoro light outside is going to be a, a major attraction for insect activity. So I try and put a treatment around that. Um, and certainly within reach, there, there are quite a number of uh, cracks and crevices that might be worth um, also spot treating. What product do you think would be suitable to use in this situation? Well, just as exactly as what you're using in, um, in your perimeter barrier spray, I'd use tempered uh, on pretty much all those areas I've just explained because uh, we really need something that's going to uh, give us good knockdown for what's there and, uh, and particularly the, the long-lasting residual that we're chasing.